like Dr. Frankenstein. New life is created from discarded bits and pieces. This is the domain of Roland Emmett, the Ditchling Tinkerer. It has just been fully restored after lying in storage for almost 15 years. It is an example of English art and English offbeat humour at their quintessential best. It is the largest and in his own view the best artwork by the eccentric, irrepressible Englishman Roland Emmett. In Battersea Park, cartoonist Emmett sees his craziest dream come to life and calls it Neptune just in time as the first passengers arrive at Oyster Creek Station. Roland Emmett shot to international fame 60 years ago when he created his now famous train line, the Far Tottering and Oyster Creek Railway, for the Festival of Britain at Battersea Park in 1951. It carried over two million passengers at the festival and earned its construction cost back in less than three weeks. Roland Emmett is one of England's greatest modern day artists. Born in 1906, he studied art in Birmingham before becoming a draftsman during the Second World War, working on the design of aircraft, including the now legendary Lancaster bomber. When not contributing to the design of English warplanes, Emmett began to create intricately detailed humorous cartoons. These would usually depict wildly imaginative flying machines, trains and other machinery that seemed to echo Victorian architecture and practicality, whilst at the same time conjuring up a magical world where machines were capable of helping people to do just about anything. His cartoons were quickly published by Punch magazine and after a short while earned him the position of resident cartoonist at the magazine. But when the Festival of Britain's organisers commissioned him to make some of his machines for real, Emmett's life changed forever. After the success of the Far Tottering and Oyster Creek Railway at the festival, he was commissioned to create the Honeywell Forget-Me-Not computer, the Slumberland Hushabye Bed, and a series of other whimsical, light-hearted pieces of art whose purpose was almost entirely, quite simply, to make people smile. Nottingham's Victoria Centre is the home of Emmett's specially commissioned Rhythmical Time Fountain, built in 1974, whilst the town of Basildon possesses the Owl and the Pussycat, an elaborate and intricately detailed clock come fountain come artwork built in 1981 that now resides in the town's Eastgate Shopping Centre. By suction. All that to clean carpets? Away with sweeping and away with brushing and away... Perhaps the most famous of Emmett's work was the commission by United Artists to design and create the hair-brained machines of inventor Caractacus Potts in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, the 1968 film based on Ian Fleming's phantasmagorical children's story. Jeremy? Today, many of Emmett's pieces are housed in permanent museum displays around the world. The Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. has owned the SS Pussy Willow 2 since 1980. And Emmett's Borg Warner Vintage Car of the Future resides at the Chicago Museum of Science and Industry. The Ontario Science Centre in Canada owns the largest collection of Emmett machines. And there are a handful of his creations in private hands in the UK and elsewhere too. The Far Tottering and Oyster Creek Railway was reprised by Emmett in 1984 when he built the last of his machines, or things as he always preferred to call them. A Quiet Afternoon in the Cloud Cuckoo Valley is the largest of his works and is in fact made up of eight separate machines that together tell a single coherent story. It depicts the tale of a pleasure trip on the far tottering and Oyster Creek Railway. The central feature is a train called Wild Goose driven by an ingenious driver who toasts tea cakes on the firebox as the train trundles along. Behind him is the first class carriage, occupied by what appears to be a lady of some considerable refinement. 
accompanied by her grandson, who is busying himself catching butterflies with a net. The rear of the train is an open wagon occupied by a railway attendant playing birdsong through an old gramophone player to accompany the journey. Along the way, the train passes various unusual and entertaining sights. At Cow Parsley Meadow, a farmer plays his harp soothingly to his herd of cows who nod their heads in appreciation. There is a large water wheel that turns timelessly, its brass cups beaten and misshapen from years of use. And in a secluded dell, there is a beautiful flowering tree on top of which sits a clock, originally intended as the focal point of the whole piece. At Shrimp Haven Sands, a fisherman can be seen out at sea, hauling in a net in which, rather surprisingly, he appears to have caught a mermaid. On the beach, a bathing hut is occupied by an elderly gentleman dressed in full-length Victorian swimwear, who dives dramatically into the water from time to time. As Wild Goose continues on its journey past Twittering Woods, an ornithologist is seen cycling along with his camera. He is disguised as a tree and has done such a good job that a bird has chosen to make its nest in his bicycle lamp. Finally, for those passengers on Wild Goose whose wishes and dreams are not yet met, there is a wishing well complete with a typically Emmett-esque leaking bucket. An interesting fact about other Emmett sculptures in which he had added a wishing well is that they have raised as much as a quarter of a million pounds for charity over the past 10 years or so. Constructing his machines out of discarded kettles, drain pipes, lampshades and any other appropriately shaped paraphernalia that he picked up in antique shops Emmett's ingenuity was unbounded, and the level of detail he injected into each of his creations was something that audiences worldwide have been smiling about for over 50 years. A quiet afternoon in the Cloud Cuckoo Valley was originally commissioned as a landmark clock and was destined to adorn a new shopping area in Basildon, England. But by the time the artwork was completed in 1984, those plans had changed. It was bought instead by the present owner and was not exhibited until 1992 in Spitalfields Market, London. Sadly, Emmett himself had passed away only two years earlier, so never saw his greatest masterpiece exhibited in public. When its time at Spitalfields came to an end, a quiet afternoon in the Cloud Cuckoo Valley was again put into what was thought to be safe storage. But in 1999, it was stolen by some enterprising thieves from a warehouse in Hertfordshire. It was sold by the thieves to a scrap metal dealer who became suspicious and alerted the police, so it was thankfully recovered. The scrap metal dealer had paid just £100 for it, at a time when the artwork was thought to be worth closer to a quarter of a million pounds. Today, a quiet afternoon in the Cloud Cuckoo Valley is refurbished, renovated and rejuvenated. It has undergone a comprehensive restoration by sculptor, artist and engineer Andy Hasler. Andy's own paintings and sculptures are regularly on display in galleries throughout the UK and he has twice had his work accepted for the summer exhibition at the Royal Academy in London. He is uniquely well suited to restore Emmett's marvellous machines, as he also has an engineering pedigree, having spent his early career as a restorer of Rolls-Royce cars at PA Woods, the only officially authorised restorers of Rolls-Royce cars in the UK. Andy has repaired and replaced numerous parts on the machines, 
repainted just about every centimetre of the work and has overseen the installation of a brand new digital control system. The result? A quiet afternoon in the Cloud Cuckoo Valley is now in as good a condition as when Roland Emmett last saw it, if not a little better. In the summer of 2014, a quiet afternoon in the Cloud Cuckoo Valley was once again placed on display for the public to marvel at in Birmingham's prestigious museum and art gallery. In only its second public outing and after a 20 year break, Emmett's last and largest artwork was exhibited in a truly mesmerising exhibition entitled Marvellous Machines, The Wonderful World of Roland Emmett. The eight machines of a quiet afternoon in the Cloud Cuckoo Valley were joined in Birmingham by the ever popular surviving Emmett machines from the Chitty Chitty Bang Bang movie, including the Clockwork Lullaby Machine, the Visi Vision Machine, the Hot Air Rocking Chair, Little Dragon Carpet Sweeper and the magnificent Humbug Major Sweep Making Machine. In addition, several other examples of Emmett's commission pieces were shown at the exhibition, including his enchanting 1962 flying machine, the Featherstone Kite Openwork Basket Weave Gentleman's Mark II Flying Machine, The 1970 Maud Exploratory Lunar Cycle, inspired by the Apollo missions of the time. And the ingenious 1983 self-golfing Fairway Birdie Mark II golf machine. Collectively, the machines helped to create an impressive montage in which some of his greatest work could be seen by the public once more. Visitors to the museum, many of whom were residents of Birmingham, could again wonder at the ingenuity, eccentric humour and sheer engineering brilliance of one of Birmingham's greatest former citizens, whose works had largely been forgotten about over recent decades. The exhibition charted the life of Roland Emmett, from his early days in Birmingham to becoming an international figure in the art world. Over a short four-month summer period, the footfall of visitors to view the exhibition was more than 70% higher than expected by the museum. The organisers had also managed to lay their hands on scores of original Emmett cartoons and drawings, pulling together the largest collection of Roland Emmett artworks ever seen in one place. The incredible detail within A Quiet Afternoon in the Cloud Cuckoo Valley is just as obvious in his other machines too. Just as when they were first exhibited as long as half a century ago, a common practice by visitors to the Birmingham exhibition was to try and recognise everyday household items within the pieces, such as cheese graters, dustpans and brushes, colanders, broken tennis rackets and all manner of otherwise useless objects. Needless to say, all these objects were used by Emmett to fantastic effect within his things. Emmett's cartoons too display his fastidious and almost fanatical attention to detail, which is hardly surprising when one considers that many were in fact working drawings created as blueprints to help Emmett and his team of helpers in building the final machines. The Birmingham exhibition was staged in conjunction with the Roland Emmett Society, a not-for-profit organisation that now comprises hundreds of Emmett enthusiasts from all around the world and whose sole purpose is to keep the memory of Roland Emmett alive.
co-founder of the society, Tim Griffiths, has been instrumental in discovering the whereabouts of hundreds of previously lost Emmett cartoons, machines and other artworks, and he has worked tirelessly to raise awareness of one of England's finest and eccentric artists. As the largest of Emmett's works, a quiet afternoon in the Cloud Cuckoo Valley took centre stage at the exhibition and in its newly restored condition was able to entertain visitors to the museum and instill wonderment and amusement in equal measure. After three years of meticulous restoration and with the interest brought about by the 2014 Birmingham exhibition, a quiet afternoon in the Cloud Cuckoo Valley seems destined to continue its rise to prominence within the art world. Discussions have taken place about setting up a permanent Emmett Museum in the UK. This would allow not only a quiet afternoon in the Cloud Cuckoo Valley, but also many of his other machines and artworks to find a home in which visitors could continue to marvel at the rich and glorious legacy left to us by one of England's greatest modern day artists. <laughs>